Hello and welcome to part one of the Galena sew along. So in today's video, which I have like six cameras set up here, it'll be posted on YouTube, uh, on Instagram, IGTV, as well as in the private Facebook group for the Galena. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the design of the Galena. How did I come about it? Uh, I'm gonna be going over how to find your size. We have a live model here, I will be measuring her. Um, and we're also gonna be putting her on uh, actually in one of her other ready-to-wear bras to kind of show the difference and how much better the Galena is versus her ready-to-wear bra. Um, then we're gonna go over how to find your mono wire, how choosing your mono wire. That's been probably the biggest question since the Galena came out. Um, and then I'm gonna go over mono wires. How are they graded? I actually have a mon two sets of mono wires here. It's the one that we had made for the Galena versus another one that we had made, and as well as the mono wire for the 8711. I've been getting a lot. Of questions if we'll be selling the mono wire for that style we will not because of the discontinued pattern moving on to bigger and better the galena um, and then we go over how to uh, cut out your fabric and your pattern a lot of you are waiting for your diy kits to come maybe you're on the cusp of purchasing a diy kit you totally should um, so i'm going to give you an overview of how to cut out your pattern and your fabric uh, what supplies come in your kits so that when you get your kit you know exactly what to do and you'll be all ready for the so long. Okay, so the first thing is, how did I come? Uh, uh, how did I develop the design for the Kalina? Uh, two things is that the Madeline Simplicity 8711, which is now a discontinued pattern, um, featured a mono wire. That was a low cut mono wire. This is a high front cut mono wire. Um, a lot of people kept asking me for if it, they could find it, if we still had it in stock, um, where they could find it, if it was coming back in the stock. Um, so it was, uh, there were a lot of people were giving me interest uh, for a mono wire style because there aren't many available. Um, so that was number one. Number two is that a mono wire has a bad reputation uh, for only being for design purposes, which I understand how they get that reputation because when I show you the grading on a mono wire, uh, it is very small. So from size to size, it is like a sixteenth of an inch. So when you get into larger sizes, that becomes a huge issue uh, because the basically when we put it on our fit model, our extra small or extra large fit model, uh, size 34, 36 band, the mono wire was literally just past her nipples. Uh, so that is why they get a bad reputation of not being super supportive. Is because when they grade, they really for larger sizes they really don't work. Um, and the other reason is that I have a lot of customers, clients, people who are close set, super close set breasts. And getting that gore to fit underneath a, um, people who are very close set, trying to get the center front gore to fit in between their breasts is really hard um, because your breasts sit close together, so it's hard to actually fit a physical product through that or in between that. We had to lie flat against the chest wall. So for people who are very close set and have a lot of breast tissue towards the center front, they actually suggest um, it's best if you wear a plunge style that has a lower uh, center front gore so that it is easier to fit in between the close set breasts. Uh, Madeline, who is our fit model, um, she is close set and she brought in one of her ready to wears. The, the Galena actually does a really good job of separating them so they aren't touching all the time. Um, so those are the three reasons why I um, developed the Galena. With everything that I design, I try to do something a little bit different. What are, what are people looking for? Um, with the Maris, it was the front closure, so I wanted to offer a solution for people who had uh, mobility issues and couldn't hook something from behind. Um, so with every pattern, I try to you know serve a different need as well as come out with something super cute. Uh, so that was the development of the mono wire, or the, the Galena, as well as the mono wire that we had made for the Galena. So you might be thinking, this is awesome, I love it, but is it going to fit me? So I'm gonna bring on our fit model, who is Madeline. I know it gets really confusing in here because Maddie, my name is Maddie, 
her name is Madeline. We have two fit models that are named Maddie slash Madeline. So it gets really confusing when we're all in here. Um, but let me move this and then Madeline, if you will step on camera really quickly. Hello, say hi to Madeline. Hi. Um, so she does a lot of our wholesale sewing, um, but she is full busted. So whenever we have to size something on, I'm like, Madeline, try it on. Um, so I'm gonna be going over how to measure yourself. And you are going to pretend that the phone is your mirror. Uh, so Madeline, will you turn to the side for me? Um, facing you? Or? Facing me. Okay. Yep, and then put your hands kind of close. Yeah, Let's take a step forwards. And then, so you are gonna pretend that, actually turn away from me, I think it's easier. Yeah, let's do that. So you are gonna first take your full bust measurement, which is the fullest part of your bust. Now you want to be, there we go. You wanna make sure that the tape measure is level all the way around. And you're probably wondering how tight should you hold your, um, the tape measure. So it should be tight enough that it stays up in place, but it shouldn't be tight where it is constricting you or altering your measurements. You want to be wearing a bra that is non-padded. Uh, I would suggest wearing a bra because especially if you have breasts that are sagging, you wanna make sure that they're in, the, in their upright position in order to get the right measurements. So you get your full bust measurement, which we measured, uh, Madeline, right before this, and it was like 36 and a half. Um, and then we're gonna take her under bust measurement. So we're gonna do your rib cage. And this is why it is very important to wear a bra because a lot of people, it's really hard to get a tape measure underneath their breasts um, to get their rib cage measurement. So you, again, you wanna do the same thing. You want to make sure that the tape measure is level all the way around. It's a little bit taut so that it can stay up in place. And that's how you find uh, your size. Um, and then you take, that's how you find your measurements. Um, I do suggest taking your measurements a couple times during the month because some people fluctuate a lot uh, one to three to five inches so knowing your range is really good um, and also don't be nervous when taking your measurements a lot of people get really nervous and when they're taking their measurements <gasps> <laughs> oh my God, what measurement am I? If I gained, if I lost any weight, and that inha inhaling is going to alter your measurement. So just stay relaxed um, and take your measurements. Um, so you're gonna take your full bust measurement. So Madeline is a 36, 36, 36 and a half today, uh, full bust. And then she is uh, a 30, 30, 30 and a half inch under bust. So she is a six inch difference. You're gonna subtract one from the other. There is a six inch difference between her full bust and her under bust. Uh, so she is an EF cup. So right now she is wearing the 30 EF cup Galena. Um, and then to find your mono wire size. So once you find your size, your 30 EF cup, Right underneath that size chart is a size chart for the mono wire. So you're gonna click that link and it's gonna give you, if you are an EF cup 30, it's gonna tell you what mono wire to choose. I always suggest buying one size up and one size down from the mono wire you think you are because you just never know what's gonna happen in sewing. Um, if you will step off camera and put it on the other bra. Yeah. yeah. So Madeline brought one of her ready to wear bras. She is definitely close that her boobs are really close together. And one of the biggest questions that I'm getting right now is does this work for full busts as well as close set breasts? Um, so I asked her to bring in one of her ready to wear bras where her boobs do touch. Um, just to give you a little comparison of, of what the Galena does uh, versus a normal ready to wear bra. I think it's, it's a molded cup, right Madeline? Yeah, um, so what we've been finding as we've been fitting it on more and more people is that if you've ever heard of like the swoop and scoop, so when you try on a bra, you have to position your breasts into your bra cups. Um, so the mono wire does a really good job of swooping and scooping it outward so that your breasts don't touch. Yeah, come on. So in this, this is just a regular molded bra. In this, she, I mean her breast tusks in between. Yeah, girl, they are touching. Yeah. They're like best friends right now. Um, so they're touching, which can definitely get annoying in the summertime because it sweats. Yeah. And you get a lot of boob sweat. Um, I already have to deal with under boob sweat. Like I don't want to have to deal with this. Yeah, which just like is not cute. So take a mental note of this, right? Her boobs are touching. Um, and then go put on the, uh, the glean again. 
Do I, so I got, a, I got a question right now, do I have thongs? Um, yes, the Maris is a thong style. Anything that we offer in DIY kits or, or anything that we offer in DIY is available and ready-made. So the Noel is a really popular high-waisted brief, it's full butt. Our Maris is a high-waisted thong. Um, and the 9478, which is also called the Cecile, that's also available in a bikini style and a thong. So we do have thongs. Um, I'm hoping to do a tutorial on how to change this into a thong, um, but for now it's just a full butt. Um, so yeah, but great questions. I'm going to be checking questions throughout, and if I don't get to your question, feel free to send me a DM, um, and I'll try to get to it later. We're just waiting for Madeline to change. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so that same bra that you made a mental note about, um, so this is her in the Galena now. And there is not, these are definitely separated. So if you swoop, yeah, swoop yeah. and scoop. I was a little bit in a hurry. There we go. So once you she swooped and scooped it, can you show underwear? Can I buy just your patterns? Okay, so yes, you can buy just the Galena pattern. Um, it's available in the Galena or in the sewing patterns page. Um, so once you tried on this bra, I mean, her boobs are definitely separated. So it really, the Galena um, is really good for close set breasts because it kind of brings the uh, breast tissue out. Not so much that it's like all the way out to her arms, um, but it really helps to separate it, which is really a lot, it's, it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, than having your boobs touching all the time. I've never had a bra do this, ever. And is it comfortable? It's very comfortable. Uh, I just didn't know that my boobs could do this. <laughs> so. Awesome, yeah. high five. Yeah. Okay, um, I think that is it. So thank you, Madeline, for coming on camera and being in your undies. Um, yeah, it, it's not an easy job at all. Um, so now I'm gonna go into um, grading a monowire. Uh, so I have like six cameras set up here. Um, but before I do that, I do want to say that the, um, speaking of sizing, the Galena is available in sizes 26, band sizes 26 to 44, and then cup sizes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So the G, H is about a 10 inch difference. So if you take your band measurement, um, it's available, the 44 is for somebody with a rib cage of 44 to 46 inches. So it can fit up to a full bust of 56 inches which is awesome. I'm always trying to increase that size range, um, but just a little bit of a time, but that's pretty awesome. Oh, hi, Christine. Um, I just saw someone I know sign on. Uh, so um, yeah, so let's get into, the next part that I want to get into is the monowire. Um, so normal monowires, when we were developing the Galena, um, normal monowires graded like that like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, and you're gonna see. So this is gonna be a huge problem if we were going to offer it into um, larger sizes. And there was a thought like, mm, do I really want to invest in uh, develop having special monowires made? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for I would never want to exclude anybody or go back two steps. So I was like, let's do it. Let's develop mono wires. So these mono wires were made for the uh, Madeline or for the Galena. Um, so if you bought a, a mono wire on Etsy or from some other bra making vendor, I can't guarantee that's going to work. Um, so you can always give it a try. But I do really, really, really recommend purchasing the mono wire. Uh, from us in order for the Galena to work and to be supportive and to fit. Um, so if you will give me about two minutes to change up all my cameras um, so I can do a look down and show you um, how a mono wire grates. Um, somebody just asked, uh, which is a great question, is it does the pattern, uh, is it available for somebody with a 25 inch uh, rib cage? So the uh, 26 really fit somebody from 26 inches to 28 inches. If you are a 25 inch rib cage, what I suggest that you do is you at the side seam. So here, looking at your pattern, you could take off like a quarter and a quarter from this and that would equal um, 
an inch, so it would fit somebody who is a 25 inch rib cage. You can also take it from the back band or slash and close here. I'll be going more into that when I get into pattern alterations, um, but just know that it's definitely, it's not too big of a size difference from the 26 band that you probably could do it. Or not probably, you could do it. Okay, so I just wanna look at the mono wires here. So these are the ones that we had specially made for the Galena. These are the ones that we tested it on. And this is the low front uh, mono wire that is for the Madeline Simplicity 8711. So as you can see here, the low front basically means that it has a lower cut front. This is a higher cut, so it comes up a little bit higher at the front. So that's all that means. I'm getting a couple questions of what's the difference between the two, so that's the difference. Um, so I'm gonna pull this away so I don't get confused. So this is the mono wires for the Galena. It's super hard to try to get them to lay like really to lay right. Uh, you have to finagle them. But as you can see here, if I put these next to each other, this is the one that we got from one of our vendors when we asked them to send their mono wire. And as you can see here, I mean that barely, that and there's a size, see how that, do, that doesn't even like, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. And there's a size in between this one and that one. So these actually are consecutive size. These are three consecutive sizes right here. They basically sit right next to each other. They, they grade a sixteenth of an inch, pretty much. Um, so the difference between the ones that are normally that you would buy versus the ones that we, we have, if you see here, there is a quarter of an inch a quarter of an inch, almost three eighths of an inch in between each size. So that it grades a half of an inch if you consider both sizes two three eighths of an inch, or a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. So a quarter times two is a half of an inch, and then three eighths times two is three quarters of an inch. Um, so that is the difference between the mono wires that we had made and the mono wires that are readily available on the market, Etsy, all that stuff. Um, and then, again, I think it's the reason why mono wires get a really bad reputation for not being super supportive, is that when you get into larger sizes, they really, they're not wide enough for um, somebody with um, a larger frame. Okay, so I've gone over the design, I've gone over measuring yourself, how to choose your mono wire. Let's get into, let's just say you, you're getting a DIY kit. Um, so you're gonna have your Main, it's gonna come with your main fabric. I know a lot of you, this uh, kit is actually out of stock right now, but you can pre-order it. It'll be back in stock in about um, a week or so. Um, so you can pre-order this. So you're gonna get your main fabric, which for this one is your printed mesh. There are some printed mesh options, some flocked mesh options, some lace options. Um, but you're gonna have your main fabric you're gonna have your lining fabric, which can be, it's gonna be stretch mesh or it's gonna be power knit. Um, I know a lot of you are wondering, can I use sheer cup lining or a non-stretch uh, lining or fabric? I hope to get into that for another tutorial, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just concentrate on the stretch meshes, the stretch fabrics, and the lines that come in your kits. So the lining that comes in your kit is either gonna be a stretch mesh or a power knit. Um, I suggest the stretch mesh for smaller sizes, uh, 26, band tw size 26 or 32, cup sizes A, B, or C, D. If you are band size 34 through 44, or cup size um, E, F, or G, H, I suggest getting the power knit. Um, and then let's go over trims because I've had a couple questions about the trims. Uh, so the first thing that I wanna call out is the Galena is available in, with two widths of fold over elastic. So there's your regular width, which is 3 eighths of an inch, but we also had um, fold over elastic that was an inch wide, it was about 3 quarters of an inch wide when folded. Um, and the reason being for that is when you get into larger sizes, um, this 3 eighths of an inch is teeny tiny on that frame. So it's really not proportionate to fuller bust or plus sizes. So we had special fold over elastics made for full bust or plus sizes, but, so I will say if you are a full bust or plus size, I would suggest getting the wider fold over elastic with the power net. It'll be supportive, it'll look proportionate on your frame. If you are a smaller bust, um, you can get the 3 eighths of an inch. The, the wider one won't look bad. When I made my Galena in, in the pink, um, I used the wider fold over elastic. I'm a 26 AB cup and I wanted to see how it looked on someone with a wider frame. It still looks cute. 
Uh, so it didn't look too wide on me. Uh, my husband actually was like, that looks really good. So if I get a compliment from him, I know it's a good design. Um, so when choosing your uh, fold over width, uh, if you are a band size from 26 to 32, or a cup size A, B, or C, D, you can choose the 3 8 of an inch or the 3 quarters. If you are a band size of 34 to 44, or a cup size of E, F, or G, H, I suggest getting the wider uh, fold over elastic. So you're gonna get your strap elastic, which are used for shoulder straps. You're gonna get your fold over elastic, um, which is used to finish pretty much all the edges except the bottom of the bra. Um, you're gonna get your channeling, um, and then you're gonna get your wide band elastic, which goes on the bottom of the bra. You're also gonna get a uh, rubber elastic, which you get this rubber elastic if you're using the wider fold over elastic. If you chose the 3 8 of an inch, you're gonna get clear elastic. This is too wide to encase in that. You're also gonna get rings and sliders, um, a hook and eye, which I don't have on camera, but uh, you will get that in your kit. And then here is the clear elastic that comes with the kits. Um, oh, also you're gonna get boning. Uh, this goes in the side seams, and I'm also going to show you, um, we actually on the garden floral, we put it inside channeling that was right underneath the cups. Uh, I will show you why when we get there, it just might confuse you if I bring it up now. Uh, so let's go over your pattern pieces, and then we'll get to cutting out everything. So what I love about bra making is that you don't have a lot of pattern pieces. Um, you just have a few. So for the bra, you just have your back band, you have your uh, front frame, which is on the fold, you have your side cup and your center front cup. Easy peasy, right? And I'm using a my size, which is a 28, 26, 28. Um, I go in between the two. Um, a, B, just for the reason of I can fit all the pattern pieces on camera. So those are the pattern pieces that you cut out for, um, which is number one, pattern piece number one, two, three, and four. Then for the panty, look at the pattern pieces. You have your back panty, which is on the fold. You have your front panty panel. You have your gusset, and then you have your uh, uh, crotch lining or gusset lining. So those are the four pieces, which is number um, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. All right, so let's get into cutting out our pattern. Um, now, let me remove, there's no, one of my rules is there's no Otis 505 allowed on this cutting mat because it gets really dirty. Okay, so you have your main, you have your lining fabric, and you have your main fabric. Now, for anybody that has a kit for the garden floral, we're giving, we're offering, or it comes with off-white stretch mesh as the lining. If you order another kit, it will come as beige. So don't get like freaked out if you're this is off-white and yours is beige. They're the same thing; they're just different colors. So one of my tricks for cutting out lingerie uh, patterns is a spray adhesive. Now we use uh, Otis 505, we use some other things. Um, this is one, that, this is Eileen's that uh, Madeline actually got at a uh, her local craft store. So um, just any temporary spray adhesive. Uh, we use it to spray base the lining fabric and the main fabric together. Now let me tell you, this most, a lot of bra makers get to this point, they try to uh, cut out their uh, fabrics would shift a lot and it's and it's just like so frustrating and they're like I'm not even gonna get to sew this because cutting it out is a bitch um, so using the Otis 505 spray adhesive or any spray adhesive is really really helpful I just cut off this selvage because it kind of um, has a tighter tension so it brings it brings everything up uh, so what you're gonna do is Give it a good shake. You spray it on. You 
you lay one fabric on top of the other. You give it a nice press, and then you treat them as one layer. Now they're just one layer, they, they function as one layer, you cut it out as one. Um, you would do this to your stretch mesh or your power net. Um, and then I'm gonna fold it in half. And then I'm gonna lay my pattern pieces out. This one has to be cut. So if you see here, all of these pattern pieces has, have arrows and they are to indicate the direction of greater stretch. Now I have de set different videos on how to find the direction of greater stretch. So if you're having questions about that, um, then check out some of those tutorials. So I'm actually gonna cut mine. Because of my limited space here and trying to get everything on camera, this is not the most economical way to cut it, but I just want to show you, there's probably a better layout to conserve fabric, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do it this way, yeah. Okay, and then I use a rotary cutter. So this is um, one of my favorite tools in bra making, as you can see, since there's so much lint on there. Um, it's a lot easier to cut out your fabric or your, your fabrics and your patterns using a rotary cutter versus regular scissors. Uh, you can use pattern weights if you want. Um, I don't. So. So there are all the pattern pieces that you should have cut out. Um, I will not go over cutting out the panty. You would do it in the same fashion, spray base your main fabric to your lining fabric, cut everything out. When we get to session two, um, we start sewing, I'll show you all the pieces that you should have uh, cut out at that point. Um, so that is the end of the sew along part one. If you have any questions, you're always, you can always email hello at madeline.com, post comments in the comment section on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever, wherever you're finding watching this video. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next time.